You don't have to make your own cloth and your own thread anymore. You have machines to do it for you and it does it a lot faster and they don't tire down like we do. And because of that, we got the first successful cotton spin factory right here in America run by our very important Mr. Samuel Slater right in that portrait. He started this all. And we do need workers for these machine operators. And the bell, which you probably heard already, calls the workers to work. They hire children from the ages of 6 through 12. And they hire children so young because they were very small and quick and nimble and because they got less pay. They only got paid 35 to 50 cents per week. Oh, per week. Which isn't a whole lot of money in my opinion. And because of that, that's why they hired the children. And we're going to see the process it takes from taking raw cotton from the south and making it into thread. So come on this way, I'll show you the process. And some of you can squeeze down so we can have the people in the back seat as well. Thank you. I can't take a video. Oh, it's coming down into the bobbins down below. And we have another type of spinning machine, except it's a much later version. And it has a carriage that comes back and forth to spin the cotton into thread. So gather around this railing. Uh, Sunday and his day off. And we would, uh, a lot of, obviously, the children that worked here were uneducated. Yeah. A lot were immigrants, they couldn't speak English. He would come in and teach them Sunday school on Sunday mornings. Awesome. He teach them religious classes. And then he teach them scholastics, reading, writing, arithmetic, history, geography. He's on his own time. Once he started uh, making some money, he hired teach student teachers from Brown University to teach them, so he kept it up. Now I don't know how long the tradition uh, lasted after his time, probably not long, but he was very innovative like that. He insisted that they have a Christian education and they have a scholastic education too. Excellent. Because they, you know, he, he had had some education, so he figured they should too. Excellent. Yeah, everybody. Electricity running the machines. It's actually the heaviness, the weight of the water running the machines connected to the shack here. Here. So this wheel pit was built in 1826. The first water wheel was put in in 1826. This is about six years old, so it's got about 15 more years. Hopefully, hopefully 15 min uh, more years, God willing, and before it breaks apart and we have to rebuild it totally. Back in the heyday of the mill, they'd only last seven or eight years because they'd be running furiously. These death factories are all three floors. That's why the walls of this building are three feet thick, made of New England rubble stone. If it was any thinner, it just came in. Yes, because of the tremendous vibration. Plus, the people would go deaf pretty quickly working in here. This railing wasn't here. That's put in for visitors, so very dangerous for them to be walking around here, too. Dangerous place to work. of the 
water. What control the speed of the water? Basically, if you put that uh, the pin in, put it on the backboards, how much you press down, it'll open the gate. So however far the gate is, that's how much water will rush okay, in. Yeah, Unless you have a drought, then it doesn't matter if you won't get the water pressure. A lot of, anyway. of, of uh, waterfalls have a different amount of gates. So you right, of yeah. gates, so you just if open. I open, uh, it'll be going twice as fast if I open both gates all okay. up. Plus, there's a governor there you can kind of regulate the speed too. Basically, it's the amount of water coming through. Does that change during the day? It changes, yes, actually. Uh, sometimes we have to bump it up if the water pressure is too low, we have to let a little, a little more in. See, so you see it'll slow down and speed up with the current now. Yeah. Basically, how much water you let in is how fast it'll go. That was installed, that metal was installed a little afterwards. That, that's pretty old metal, but it still works very well. But another 15 years or so, we'll have to take this some of the whole thing, what's left of it, and rebuild it. Is that cast iron? Are those cast iron? Yes, those are cast iron, yep. Where is it still? Where is it made? Where was it? Where was it? Where? Right here. Yep. We couldn't roll another one in, so we had to rebuild it right here. Yep. And when this wears out, right, when you look in, you see the frame. Is the wood soaked in creosote or anything? Is, that, soaked, is, it, is the wood soaked in any preservative or anything like that? It's kind of got some pitch on it. Okay. Yeah, it's preserved with pitch, otherwise it's just plain wood. Like they built Noah's Ark. Right. Pitch. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yes, it's kind of the same thing. I don't know if it's gold wood or what. No, whatever, you know. <laughs> actually, actually, it's a uh, southern yellow pine and oak on the outside. How long does it take to build that thing? Well, it takes about, uh, I think they did it in like a... Uh, Uh, age 66. That's pretty good in those days. Yes, yep, that was pretty good.